Well, we got Scott Smith on the line, and we have a very exciting topic here today as we talk about asset protection, right, Scott? Yeah, that's right. We're talking about asset protection today, how to make sure that all the things that you've worked so hard to build and create in your life don't get taken from you from lawsuits. So why don't we start things off by having you introduce yourself to everybody on the show? Yeah, sure thing. So uh, my name is Scott Royal Smith. Uh, I'm an attorney and longtime real estate investor. Um, I have a company called Royal Legal Solutions. Uh, we're a, a law firm that uh, helps investors um, at all different levels. Uh, but what we specialize in is how to bring everything together um, with the estate planning, the taxes, uh, and entity structuring, how to acquire the assets, et cetera. And uh, I actually got started in real estate when I was in law school. Um, I bought my first property uh, during my second year of law school. It was an active transmission and auto repair shop in a commercial building, which I flipped at the end of law school to be the only person in my class to graduate without uh, any debt. And I continued to invest in real estate even while I was working in litigation, suing insurance companies. Uh, eventually, I was making more money in real estate than I was being an attorney, so I just did real estate full time, and, and I pretty soon ran into the problems that um, the, you know, a lot of you guys and, and uh, all my clients now run into, which is, you know, how do you get everything uh, to fit together? So I had to put that together uh, for myself. Um, and then as I went to meetup groups, uh, people started asking me, hey, Scott, what are you doing? And I started sharing with them, like, hey, this is how I, you know, I put it all together. And they said, well, can you help me, you know, do that for me? And uh, so, I, and that way, I kind of accidentally started a law firm. Um, and uh, six years later, uh, we're up to about 30 people and help clients in all 50 states um, and uh, in every asset class. Uh, so I'm an open book um, for any information that, uh, that you want to know. And that's our one of our core values of our company um, at Royal Legal Solutions is we give away all the information for free. And you know, people can choose to do that with uh, whatever they want. Well, that's really uh, telling. I, I mean, it, it's funny how uh, a lot of people will kind of hold things back as if uh, it's some sort of secret sauce. So Yeah, there's no secret sauce to this stuff. You know, there's tried and true ways that are the best practices of how to do this stuff, and that's what, that's what I teach around. Well, can we, can we start at the beginning here then? Can we, can we cover a little bit about why people would want to look at, at this and, and uh, why they would need further protection? Because I'm sure there are some people on two, two fronts, they figure insurance will cover it or, uh, you know, they can go to legal zoom and, and just set up an LLC and off they run. Yeah, sure. And, and that works some of the time, right. Uh, with those strategies. So, um, one thing that I realized as I started dealing with people that are higher and higher net worth is that, um, saving money and making money in the short run isn't the game. The game is how do you actually create predictable long-term growth, right? Um, and, uh, so to do that, you actually have to do things um, in a way that are going to make sure you don't have major setbacks. So um, I originally got, you know, really interested in asset protection um, for two, two major reasons. One is that I, my background is in litigation and suing insurance companies. And, and through that process, what I learned is that insurance companies are business just like any other business, right? They, their business is built around collecting premiums and, and denying coverage. And I had a friend of mine who ended up getting sued, who was very well insured, uh, owned uh, all of his properties in his own name. And uh, he lost over $3 million in real estate from a single lawsuit. Hmm. And if he would have just taken some simple preventative measures, uh, he would have walked away uh, from that lawsuit with losing probably nothing. Um, so there's a, a piece to this that uh, you have to understand, which is um, what are the ways that you're able to tilt the legal leverage in your favor um, and how to do that in a way that's going to be affordable and also a way that's going to be a way that can streamline your operations. You know, if you have to do a, a thousand tax returns, that's not going to be feasible, right? If you have to manage a ton of bank accounts, that's not going to be feasible. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you need high levels of protection. Uh, and the way I look at that is the best levels of protection you can get um, is to create anonymity uh, with the ownership of your assets. So it looks like you qualify for food stamps. So people simply just don't want to sue you because it's a bad business decision to do so. Mm -hmm. And if they do, you're in a position where you lose little to nothing. Sure. Well, you know, th this is kind of an interesting topic then because, 
You know, we get uh, that question comes up quite a bit, you know, like what a person should do starting a business. Um, so in the end, uh, what, what new company structure should somebody really take a look at? You know, is it an LLC? Is it an S Corp? What, what would you recommend somebody take a look at? Yeah, so the first thing you need to make sure that you have is good insurance, right? I'm very well insured by myself with all of my real estate. Um, and the reason why I pay for insurance, yeah, even though, of course, I have great asset protection for myself, is because insurance does a great job of handling all the nuisance claims, right? But insurance is pretty limited. They only handle negligence claims for simple accidents. Um, and insurance companies actually get to decide whether they want to cover a claim or not. All they have to simply claim is that, hey, this is an accident that you should have known was going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. What you find is that they always claim that whenever the claims get expensive, right? As you would think a corporation would do, right? Is that mm -hmm. if it's really expensive, let's deny the coverage and then leave the person, you, uh, having to sue your own insurance company uh, to get them to pay, knowing that now you have to fight the deep pockets of your own insurance company. So... Uh, so, uh, so insurance really is your, your best first line of defense, but you don't ever depend on a profit seeking corporation to protect you because that's not their interest, right? Right. Their interest is profitability. So what you need to do is, is, is to take this next step, which is creating um, an anonymous uh, series LLC structure and anonymous series LLC structure is the absolute best because what it allows you to do is to make it look like you qualify for food stamps by hiding all of your assets behind um, a law firm and a trust, which makes it so that all your information is uh, anonymized um, and that if anybody asks about it, it's all protected by the attorney client privilege. If they ask about it, we're not able legally able to tell them and won't tell them. Um, and then secondarily, you want to use a series LLC because a series LLC allows you to compartmentalize every single asset for free. Uh, so that way, if there's ever a lawsuit against one of your assets, um, they can't go after any of your other assets and they can't go after you personally. Mm -hmm. So would this, would this solve the problem? Like, uh, you know, I, there are some real estate investing coaches out there that will advise people to get an LLC, LLC per property. Yeah, absolutely. That's what the series LLC is designed to do is to say what's you get the same high levels of protection as having individual LLCs, but you get it, you get to do it for free. You get to operate all of your business out of a single bank account and only have one tax return with one EIN number. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the series LLC too can be formed in one of four States, either Delaware, Texas, Nevada, or Wyoming, which have strong asset protection laws known as charging order protections. And you can then use that series LLC in any state uh, per the full faith and credit of the United States Constitution. Just like people form Delaware LLCs and use them everywhere else, you can do the same thing with series LLCs. Hmm. Okay. So let's say somebody went through the process and they've already set up an LLC just in their backyard. You know, I'm, I'm here in uh, Minnesota, North Dakota. Um, is there a way to incorporate these assets that I've already acquired and, and without triggering a due on sales clause or something else going on there? Yeah. So uh, what you do is, is you create your series LLC and then the series LLC works as like a parent child structure uh, so that you have your parent series LLC and then you can create an infinite number of these child series. Each one of them acts just like an LLC, but they're free to create. Uh, then underneath each child, you create a land trust. And then you move the property from however it's currently being held into the land trust. And what that does is it avoids the due on sale clause. Um, it also creates anonymity with the ownership of the asset because the asset's being held by a trust at that point. That trust is in turn owned by your LLC. And that's how you get the anonymity combined uh, with the protection, right? So that's, mm -hmm. you can avoid the due on sale clause, create the anonymity. That way you're not going to have any problems with the bank. You can still continue to get the best financing, uh, rates that you want using your conforming loans and be able to move them after the fact uh, using that strategy. Now, if you have an existing LLC, uh, you say, hey, well, I don't want that to go to the waste. It's perfect. Keep it. And what you want to use that LLC for is an operating company, right? So you have this asset holding company, which is a series LLC. And that's like maybe on your left hand, right? If you want to mm -hmm. think about this anatomically. Uh, and then on your right hand, uh, you would have your operating company, which conducts all of your transactions. So that would serve um, as your company that you're going to do all of your business through. 
So you're going to hire contractors to that entity. You're going to collect rents to that entity. You're going to pay property management companies to that entity. Everything that you do in life flows through that entity. And why that's really important is because anything that you do in connection to somebody, whether it's sending an email, um, signing a contract, et cetera, all of those things have liability. If you enter into them in your personal name, even if you don't own any assets, that lawsuit can hurt your credit score, right? Mm -hmm. Almost invariably will hurt your credit score. And as a real estate investor, we know that your credit score is one of the most important things um, that you need to be able to get financing, to be able to get into more properties. So um, at a very minimum, every real estate investor should have two entities, one series LLC to hold all their assets and a separate LLC um, that's completely separate uh, from the series LLC that they run all of their operations through. And they should never own anything or do anything in their personal name because that's not what rich people do. Rich people don't own things and they don't pay taxes. Mm -hmm. So so can you kind of uh, walk us through the process then if I'm going to acquire a new uh, property, how would that how would that flow through all of these entities? Yeah, so uh, what, you, what you would do is, is that you would acquire the property, get your best financing. Um, then uh, what you would do is contact your attorney. Um, if that was us, you would call, you would contact your dedicated advisor uh, here at Royal, Royal Legal and then, uh, or, your, or your attorney. And then you would say, hey, well, I need to create a new land trust or a new child series of my series LLC, and I need to deed the property over. And then it's the law firm's job at that point to prepare that trust and that child series and also create the deed to move the asset um, from however it's currently being held. And man, perhaps that's in your personal name um, and move that into, uh, into the land trust. Mm -hmm. So can you tell, tell me a little bit then about, you know, how, how would a person handle some of the banking, insurance, accounting uh, around all of this infrastructure? Yeah, it's super simple. Um, so all of your banking is held, you know, you just need one bank account uh, for your series LLC. Um, inside of your accounting, what you'll do is, is a simple QuickBooks uh, tagging or classification uh, to classify or tag uh, the income and expenses for each of the individual child series. And that's how you're able to operate out of one bank account um, while you still are able to um, show the court if it's ever challenged that, hey, we really are operating these uh, entities uh, as separate entities, and that's how you prevent any uh, piercing the corporate veil or any of those types of issues um, with that, right? Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the insurance, you're actually your insurance is actually able to stay in place exactly the same way it is right now. All you have to do is add the name of the land trust um, to the insurance as an additional insured, and that's like a quick, you know, 10-minute phone call to your insurance agent, and there's no cost. Uh, to have to do that and you don't have to end up paying any type of commercial rates. You're still able to keep those low uh, personal insurance rates. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, you said you give a lot of information away um, and, and I, something tells me that we're just kind of brushing, just brushing the tip of the mountain on this. Um, is there any other tips or tricks that you, you could probably impart uh, that uh, we haven't covered here yet? Uh, yeah, so for the terms of the asset protection, that's the nuts and bolts um, of the structure itself, right? Um, and that for the asset protection with the series LLC. And then we talked about the operating company to be able to help protect you personally. Mm -hmm. um, the other two considerations um, that are really important are going to be around, well, how do I actually pass these assets on? Well, to do that, you actually need an estate plan. And your estate plan should include both a living trust and a will. Um, you need a living trust because uh, without a living trust, all of the assets go through a probate process where all of them get exposed as part of the public record and you can potentially just create a target on whoever is going to inherit that property. Also, without a living trust and the estate planning put in place, the government actually decides who gets your assets when you die. Right? So mm -hmm. if you want to control how those assets are going to pass and who they're going to go to, you, the only way to do that is to take those proactive steps uh, to put together the asset protection and put together the estate planning. The third peg um, of this, or the third, uh, third leg of the stool, so to speak, is uh, the tax savings, right? So, and when you're thinking about tax savings, you need to think about two major concepts. One is how do I pay the lowest amount in tax to the government? And two, how do I save the most amount of money by streamlining my taxes so that I have the least amount of filings that I have to do so I'm not having to pay a ton of amount of money out to the CPAs? Mm -hmm. And 
and the whole structure that we use uh, incorporates um, those three strategies uh, together uh, and streamlines it. That's what we specialize in. And um, if you're looking for a good resource um, for that, um, what I did, which is really different than I think any other attorney that I've ever run into, is I've actually put the full um, system, including the estate planning, the asset protection, the tax savings, all on my website. And it's all on the page when you go to the royallegalsolutions.com and you click up the top of get a price. We have a quick uh, quiz to be able to say, okay, what's the key information that we need to know about you to have a meaningful conversation, our first conversation. Um, and also it's an hour and 45 minute video that's in a single take um, where I walk through absolutely everything in the most detail possible. It's like drinking from a water hose and the actual nuts and bolts of how everything works. I mean, literally everything is in uh, that video. But I can talk to you about any three of those legs of the stool or, or more about additional resources and whatever you think is going to be most helpful. Yeah, this, this is this is really an interesting and, and complex. You, you came at the right time because, we, you know, like I said, we get... A lot of people asking about this exact thing, and uh, we we really you know struggle with giving people the proper direction. and And I couldn't thank you enough for coming on the show. And I'm definitely going to make sure to include all of your resource links in the show notes. Um, is there any other question that you can think of that you wish I would have asked you here today? Yeah, I think there's some some other pieces to this that I think are really important for people to know, and it has to do with some of the, the pieces that we look at when it comes into the tax savings component to it. Um, you know, because after you do the entity structuring, that's always the next question you look at. Say, like, hey, how do I save money from from the government, right? Mm -hmm. um, when we look at that, there's there's two things. So if you're making less than fifty thousand dollars a year, um, don't worry about anything in terms of tax savings. You're actually not making enough money for any of the strategies to really pay dividends to you, right? You're going to pay more in um, cost for CPAs and whatnot than you're actually going to get in real tax savings. Um, and same thing with asset protection, right? If you have less than $100,000 in total assets, in terms of cash, stocks, equity, and your real estate, those are the things that I'm typically thinking of in terms of assets. If that's under $100,000, maybe don't worry about asset protection, right? Maybe it's just, uh, maybe wait until um, you have enough to say, hey, this is where it justifies the expense, right? But after you hit that $100,000 mark in total assets, then let's put together asset protection. After making more than $50,000 a year, then let's look at how we can do what tax saving measures um, that you can do for you. And the best tax saving pieces that we found for real estate investors come in two parts. Um, the first thing to do uh, is to uh, use your operating company um, and have that taxed as an S corporation. So what you're able to do there is take your income that you would make um, through your real estate, you can channel it through your operating company and have that get taxed out to you as an S corporation, which allows you to save on self-employment tax by dividing the income between dividend income and employee wages. And it saves you about 10% overall, right? Mm -hmm. So you can lower that tax bracket. If you're a you know 35% bracket, you've just lowered yourself down to a 25% bracket, right? The big savings just with that. The next thing that you can do is create what's called a solo 401k, and that's your own personal 401k. And if you have a W-2 job, you can also create your own 401k. Um, and what you're able to do with that is able to put up to $56,000 a year into your solo 401k, your own 401k account, and then you can make investments out of your solo 401k. This becomes extremely powerful because if you look at it over um, – you know, the, a long time period. And if you're looking at over a 30 year period and you put $56,000 a year in um, and invest that at, at a normal rate of return, say 10%, um, and you look at those gains versus the gains that you would make not using a retirement account, you're looking at, you know, the difference between over 30 years having $3 million versus $10 million. And I go through some of those numbers in that presentation um, that we have up there on the website of how do, uh, how do we actually get to that? What are all the breakdowns? Um, that would make you know that. So tax savings, the best thing you can do is um, once you start making more uh, money, use that S corporation for any money that you want to pull out for your personal use, any extra money that you have, put that into your retirement account, invest through that retirement account to be able to buy the extra assets um, that you want. Uh, those, any gains that you make in those assets are also non-tax, remember, because it's inside of a 401k and assets and gains that you make inside of 401k aren't taxed. And the, and the really cream on the top or the cherry on the top 
uh, for this type of strategy is that if you need cash out of your 401k, you're able to loan yourself back up to 50% of the value of your solo 401k. Um, and you have to pay it back within five years at 5% interest, but you're paying that back to your own retirement account. So you can think about these things in a couple of ways, right? Because not only can you um, save money on your taxes, but you also still have access to the cash if you ever get into a pinch. Yeah, this is it's really interesting. And it's, it's, it's really neat to hear how you've kind of pieced all of this together because, you know, we get a little instructions here and there, but it sounds like you really have it all planned out and it's a, more of a complete package. Well, it's, uh, it's designed to be that way, and it's designed to be able to scale at whatever level you are. So the way that we think about what we do is that we, we're trying to get people uh, first, primarily, is say, what are the best structures you need to start with, right? And you start at whatever level you can. Um, and then you're able to build on it like Lego blocks over time. So you don't have to set up everything all at once. The next great piece about it, too, is that um, using these types of structures is the tried and true ways that I've been able to study over the last um, six years on what are the predictable ways that we've seen people grow their net worth, right? From zero to 5 million. So mm -hmm. that's what we focus on is primarily first, how do we get people to have the right structures and tax strategies in place to first accomplish financial freedom? So that way, Worst case scenario happens, right? They don't have to work a job or they don't have to worry about that anymore, right? The next thing is, okay, how do we actually build that wealth up to that $5 million uh, mark where we see that that's the big inflection point where people's lives dynamically change in terms of once you hit that $5 million mark, now you're at a totally different level standard of, of living and economic security. Right. So, you know, and... You know, we could probably extend this conversation even longer because you're just spurring up some other questions then. You know, based on what you're telling me, especially regarding the tax benefits, um, that makes you start to wonder if you have the, the proper uh, team member there helping you with your taxes since you, since you and your team would be specializing in the, in the LLC and the corporation and, and how to protect the assets. Um, the other, the other members need to be uh, in line and understand the situation as well. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. And what we find is that most professionals don't specialize in real estate and don't really realize how to leverage um, all of the tax strategies and asset protection strategies together. Um, because, you know, it, it's not just tax savings, right? You have to streamline the operations too, because this has to be manageable, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it also has to be, um, streamline it in the course of, you know, how are you going to report on taxes because you don't want to be overpaying for your CPA. So we've actually in-housed everything and grew organically to now I have a team of about 30 people with three attorneys, big paralegal team, a number of support staff, um, and we take care of everything in-house. So we're essentially a one-stop shop um, to be able to take a client in, um, figure out, okay, what are your, where are you at right now? Where are you trying to go? Um, here's the infrastructure pieces that you need to put in place now. These are the things that you would want to look at putting in place in the future. Here's when you're going to want to look to put those um, pieces in. Um, and every one of our clients, uh, we bring them in and we have a, at least a twice yearly review, right? Because we actually don't mm -hmm. trust our clients. We don't trust them to do anything right. So what we do is we use that twice yearly meeting um, to proactively look at what are the tax strategies um, that we need to deviate from because maybe some of your life uh, circumstances change. Maybe you haven't actually been doing your bookkeeping right, right? Maybe you haven't been signing your contracts right. And we need to go back. We need to have that touch point with you to correct course along the way. A lot of people wait until the end of the year um, to look at a lot of these things. And what that means is they've actually lost all the opportunity because it's actually too late. Or they'll wait to put in asset protection until they think there's a threat. Well, once a lawsuit even gets threatened against you, it's actually too late. It's called a fraudulent transfer at that point. But if you're proactive on these things, not only do you save money, but it's actually the only effective way to save money on taxes and to protect your lawsuits. And if you do take the proactive steps, that's when you see um, the huge gains that are being made. Yeah. See, you know, what, what makes this really sound neat, Scott, is the fact that we've always struggled with finding those team members that can be in a consultative uh, manner with us that to help us and guide us in those areas that we don't specialize in. And uh, it sounds like uh, you have that. And uh, that, that's, that sounds really appealing. And I hope people uh, hear this episode and take you up on this. 
Yeah, well, we're always happy to help anybody that wants to learn. You know, that's why we, we built a, spent a ton amount of money and, uh, and time with uh, investing into our website uh, to be able to host all the information on there. Because again, you know, that's what we're in the business of is helping people get educated into it, right? And what we believe is that by offering all the information, presenting all of the, the, the aspects and the intricacies um, that we've seen, uh, different types of investors, whether it's commercial real estate, whether it's residential real estate, whether it's multifamily, whether it's single family, whatever the case may be, um, be able to have one cohesive system that we can just show them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and through that, we think that we build trust um, with, with all of our clients from the very beginning and that we can help the most amount of people because not everybody is going to want to use us, right? Um, we understand that, but we're actually in the business of helping as many people as we can, not just trying to make the most money that we can. Sure. So, you know, you already mentioned your website once, which is royallegalsolutions.com, but is there any other way people could reach out and get a hold of you or your team? It's, it's really the best way um, because royallegalsolutions.com is actually set up to have all the education components to it. Um, we have all of our PDF walkthroughs there that, are, um, that you'll end up getting directed to um, depending on um, where you land on the website. The website's kind of like a choose your own adventure story, right? Where you get to select, okay, here's the type of investor I am. Okay. And then we guide you to, okay, here's the strategies you need to know about. Um, and then we have that quiz page there um, that has, uh, once you click on the get a price at the top of the page, it, it guides you to um, to that page to be able to have that initial contact. Um, but here's something that we do that's also extremely different than any other company that I've run into is that we actually have live chat with my actual staff and it's mm. right there in the bottom right hand corner. So you can actually interact, ask us questions, um, ask us like, Hey, how do I find a particular resource or whatever that is? And actually get live people right then. You don't even have to call in. I mean, we'll just, we'll answer your question or we'll send you the link just right there in the chat. That's really cool that you're, you're that available. Um, once again, I can't thank you enough for being on the show, Scott. This was quite the eye opener. And, and uh, you know, it, asset protection is one of those topics that uh, people typically, you know, uh, it, it's unfortunately has become the last thing people think about, but it should be something that they should uh, seriously consider and getting it set up correctly. Yeah, I think so. And I think a lot of people, um, too, are in this place now with everything with the coronavirus and all of that that's going on. And, and it's kind of put everybody in this, oh, what do I do with my real estate? And, you know, is this the right time to do it? Um, and I can tell you from my litigation experience, it's actually an economic downturns is actually when litigation spikes. And that's historically always true, because when people are making less money or they're in economic disparity, that's when they try to take from somebody else. Right. Sure. Um, and the only way to protect yourself from that kind of frenzy and panic uh, is to have the right structures put in place and have them put in place ahead of time to make sure that like on top of your own economic problems, you don't end up having these lawsuits and these vultures coming after you because you have properties in your own name and you're unprotected. Right. Yeah. And that's something that I think people kind of, uh, it slips off their radar. This isn't just asset protection or protection of your business assets. It's, it's protection of your personal assets too. And, uh, you know, we are all into the real estate investing for the betterment of our family and lifestyle. And uh, that's, that's something that we should really keep, on, keep in mind. Yeah, I think so. You know, these are the things that you have to do to have security in the long term right? If you're really focused on how do I create stability in my life, how do I make sure that I'm always up and to the right, and I don't have um, big setbacks or the unexpected things happen, and then now I have this huge problem, um, asset protection is the way that you're able to avoid that because it puts you in a position to say, even if the worst case scenario happens, I'm totally fine. My family is totally fine. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks again, Scott. I really appreciate it, and I hope uh, you'd consider being on the show again sometime soon. Yeah, it was great being here. Thank you so much for uh, having me on the show. And um, I'd be happy to uh, help everybody out um, if they want to go to the royallegalsolutions.com and, and check that out um, and be available to, uh, to help anybody with any questions they have or just free information. I'm just here to serve. I appreciate it. Thanks again, Scott. Thank you.